One of the most important features of adaptive immunity is the immunological memory. Recall that immunological memory is the ability to recognize and quickly respond to the previously encountered antigen. We know that naive B and T lymphocytes are present throughout our body. And each of these lymphocytes is equipped with unique antigen receptors. So, what happens when an antigen is encountered by the adaptive immune system for the first time? Some of the lymphocytes residing in our body recognize this antigen and bind them. This happens because these lymphocytes have antigen specific receptors on their cell membrane. Now, these lymphocytes specific for the invading antigen are few in number. Once antigen recognition is done, these lymphocytes get activated. They proliferate and undergo clonal expansion. As a result, number of antigen-specific lymphocytes increases. Some of these cells differentiate into short-lived effector cells. These antigen-specific effector cells eliminate the antigen from the body. Besides this, other antigen-specific lymphocytes differentiate into long-lived memory cells. These memory cells remain in a resting state until they encounter the same antigen again in future. This is known as primary immune response. So, now our immune system has acquired ability to recognize and eliminate this antigen if encountered again in future. Now let's see what happens when the same antigen invades the body for the second time. We know that memory cells specific to this antigen are already present in the body. As these memory cells encounter the antigen, they undergo rapid differentiation into antigen-specific effector cells that eliminate the antigen. New memory cells are also produced during this response. So, here we saw that there is a rapid immune response on second exposure to the previously encountered antigen. This is known as secondary immune response. And this response is the reason that we maintain long-term or even lifelong immunity to certain antigens. Primary and secondary immune response can be studied by monitoring serum antibody levels in case of humoral immunity. Let's study in detail the primary and secondary antibody responses. Here we will study change in antibody concentration in the serum with respect to time. Suppose an individual is infected with a pathogen for the first time. Initially, for several days, no antibodies are detectable in the serum of the patient. This period is known as lag or latent phase. This is the time when B cells recognize the antigen, they undergo clonal expansion and differentiate into antibody producing plasma cells. Among the lymphocytes present in the individual's body, some B lymphocytes have B cell receptors specific to this antigen. So, these B lymphocytes recognize and bind these antigens. The B lymphocytes get activated. They proliferate and differentiate into plasma cells and antibodies are secreted. Also antigen-specific memory B cells are also produced. Therefore, after a latent phase of several days, antibodies begin to appear in the blood plasma of the individual. As plasma cells synthesize antibodies, the concentration of antibodies in the serum also increase. This phase in which there is a rapid increase in the concentration of antibodies against the pathogen is known as log or exponential phase. The antibody concentration increases up to a certain plateau. 
This plateau represents steady state or stationary phase. During this phase, antibodies are degraded as fast as they are formed. There is an equilibrium between antibody synthesis and antibody degradation. Next, there is a declining phase. That means the concentration of antibodies starts decreasing. This happens because the antigen is now eliminated by the antibodies. And now, there is no stimulus for production of more antigen-specific antibodies. Remember that, during primary immune response, the antigen-specific memory B cells take a precedence in large numbers, and they remain in resting state. Thus, this graph shown here, represents the primary immune response. Now, let's look at the secondary antibody response. When the individual get exposed to the same pathogen, for the second time, secondary immune response results. Now, this second exposure can be within weeks, months, or even years later. As compared to primary antibody response, the rate of antibody synthesis, the peak of graph, and the length of antibody persistence are greatly increased. The lag phase of secondary antibody response is short. This is because of the presence of pre existing, antigen specific memory cells. The memory cells divide rapidly and produce antibody secreting plasma cells and more memory cells. Plasma cells quickly synthesize and release large quantities of antibodies. Thus the rate of increase in the serum concentration of antibodies is much higher. And these antibodies can be detected in the serum for much longer periods after the second exposure. So, here you can compare the primary and secondary antibody response. Let's now have a look at the antibody classes or isotypes produced during these responses. In primary antibody response, IgM appears first. These antibodies can directly bind to the foreign antigen. Since IgM is a pentameric molecule, it is efficient antibody in the initial stage of infection. Meanwhile the cytokines trigger proliferating B cells to switch from IgM producing plasma cells to IgG or some other Ig class producing plasma cells. Now note that only the class of antibody changes, not the antigen specificity. As IgM production declines, IgG production speeds up. And finally at the end of primary antibody response, concentration of IgG also declines. In secondary antibody response, again IgM is produced before IgG. But this time, IgM is produced in smaller quantities for a short period. And IgG is produced sooner as compared to primary immune response, and, in much larger quantities. These antibodies may also be accompanied by the appearance of IgA and IgE. The antibodies of secondary immune response are different from that of primary response. Antibodies of different isotypes may be secreted in the secondary response because of immunoglobulin gene rearrangements in B cells. Also these antibodies have increased affinity towards the pathogen, due to somatic point mutations in the immunoglobulin genes. IgG, IgA, and IgE are known as antibodies of secondary immune responses. Thus, we now understand that, the primary immune response is slow, and, short-lived. It has a long lag phase and antibodies are found in the blood plasma of the individual for short period of time. But secondary immune response is rapid, strong, and prolonged.
it has a short lag phase, and high concentration of antibodies persists for longer period in the blood plasma of the individual.